In September of 2009, a day out at Knott's Berry Farm for the Wheeler family turned into a harrowing nightmare when 12-year-old Kyle and his father Russell boarded the Accelerator roller coaster. The ride, which had opened in 2002, was a fan favourite in the park and due to its unique hydraulic design, could go from 0 to 82 miles per hour in a matter of seconds. However, 4 seconds after the train left the station, a gruesome incident occurred as one of the launch cables snapped and whipped towards Kyle. The whole thing was caught on camera, but what exactly happened that day and what caused the cable to snap? Let's talk about it. This is the infamous accelerator disaster, the fate of Kyle Wheeler. In December of 2001, Knott's Berry Farm located in Buena Park, California, announced its highly anticipated replacement for the Windjammer Surf Racers roller coaster. This would be the Accelerator, and with Intamin at the helm and $13 million to spend, there was no way it could disappoint, and it certainly didn't. It's described on the Knott's Berry Farm website, Rocket from 0 to 82 miles per hour in 2.3 seconds as you fly 205 feet into the air, before immediately hurtling 90 degrees straight down on Accelerator the Ride roller coaster at Knott's Berry Farm. Accelerator was unique to the park and to Intamin as it was their first hydraulically launched roller coaster. A hydraulically launched roller coaster is an amusement ride that uses hydraulic fluid pressure to rapidly accelerate the train from a standstill to high speeds within seconds. Seven months after it was announced, Accelerator opened to the public on June the 22nd, 2002. The track length was 2,202 feet and the duration of the ride would last 1 minute and 2 seconds. The ride was inspired by the greasers culture of the 1950s, and as stated on their website, from the minute you enter the station, you're transported back to the time of greasers, beatniks and cubes. The safety restraints include a hydraulically operated T-bar lap bar restraint and a seat belt which are checked by operators before the train is released. There are 2 trains and 5 cars and 20 people can ride at any given time and before the incident in 2009, the safety record on the accelerator was good. They did have one incident in 2004 where the ride was briefly shut down due to deaths on other rides, prompting officials to step in and refurbish the potentially defective T-bar restraint system, but it opened a few months later and continued to be a fan favourite in the park for many years to come. Rarely, a train may not gain enough speed to clear the 205 foot climb, causing it to stall and roll back onto the launch track where magnetic brakes stop it. The ride is designed for this, and it can be caused by weather, weight or overheating. This will come of importance later on in the video. On the 16th of September 2009, 12 year old Kyle Wheeler along with his father Russell and mother Anita Wheeler visited Knott's Berry Park for a day out. Knott's Berry Farm located in California started as a berry farm in the 1920s and evolved into America's first theme park. They were visiting from Weaverville, which is located in Buncombe County, North Carolina. The family spent the day at the park enjoying the various rides it had to offer, and at approximately 4pm, Kyle and his father Russell boarded the accelerator. The two sat in the front row, whilst Anita watched from the sidelines. Now remember, this was a hydraulically launched roller coaster, so when it set off, it set off fast. Four seconds after the train left the station, one of the launch cables snapped. Once it snapped, it viciously whipped out towards Kyle Wheeler and his dad, splitting the car in half. Metal debris along with the cable flew towards Kyle, slashing his calf at 80 miles per hour. Anita, who was watching on in horror said, I literally thought that I had just watched my son and husband die in front of my eyes. Kyle was now screaming in pain, as his dad was yelling frantically for ride operators to stop the ride. In a recorded video of the incident, you can see the moment Kyle's face turns from excitement to pure fear, yet remarkably, he keeps his composure. As one of the launch cables snapped, the ride did not gain enough momentum to clear the 205 foot drop, causing it to roll back, and once it did, the ride operator realised something was wrong and stopped the ride. After the ride was stopped, his father ran to get help and emergency services were called. Kyle was transported to hospital and was seriously injured. Another man on the roller coaster was also transported to hospital after complaining of back pain. The ride was immediately shut down and an investigation was launched. After the incident, Knott's Berry Farm released a statement saying, The cable on the accelerator ride is changed regularly. It was last changed in December 2008 
and is good for one year. It was not due to be changed until December. They maintain that regular maintenance was done and also went on to say, more than 10 million people have ridden the accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm over the past eight years, and this is the first time something like this has happened. However, investigators found this to be false. It came to light that in 2004, a launch cable snapped on a similar ride known as the Top Thrill Dragster, which injured four people. Meanwhile, experts from the California Division of Occupational Safety and Health were brought in to examine the ride. It would take them six months to conclude their investigation. Ultimately, they found that the incident could have been completely prevented if the cables were maintained properly. They blamed the theme park and the ride manufacturer Intamin. The investigators claimed the maintenance instructions were too confusing and they couldn't determine if the ride needed to be inspected every month or every six months. It turns out it was every month. Knott's Berry Farm inspected the ride every six months. However, even though Knott's Berry Farm believed the inspections were to take place every six months, they were still 19 days late by the time the incident happened, meaning 19 days before Kyle and his father got onto the ride, the cable should have been inspected and changed. The park released a statement saying, the investigation identified shortcomings in the manufacturer's instructions regarding the inspection and maintenance of the cable. The state agency had required Knott's Berry Farm to put in place additional safeguards to determine cable viability and to work with the manufacturer to revise maintenance instructions. The report also indicated that the broken cable showed severe fatigue and discovered that the impact of the accident sheared off 18 out of the 20 magnets located on the bottom of the coaster cars used for launching and braking. Whilst this investigation was going on, it was clear to all that the Wheeler family's lives would change forever. Kyle remained in hospital for months, undergoing multiple surgeries to repair the damage done. He had skin grafts and underwent months of physiotherapy and thankfully, he regained function in his knee and ankle. His mother said, This whole experience has been terribly hard on my whole family. I am overwhelmed with emotion most days. She went on to say, I can't talk about it without crying. It was horrible. During his time in hospital, the Wheeler family received bills of up to $60,000, but thankfully they reached an undisclosed settlement with the park to cover this, as well as the emotional distress caused. Kyle went on to make a full recovery, and the accelerator would go on to reopen in 2010, and remains open to this day. As always, this is not an AI channel, I do everything myself, and if you appreciate my work, subscribe, and if you want to go that extra step to support the channel, maybe consider becoming a member. I'm glad Kyle was alright in the end, but this entire incident could have been completely avoided. I hope his family is doing well. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.